This is lecture two on uh, course analog integrated circuit, and it was pointed out in the last uh, lecture that uh, almost all the circuits that we will discuss in this course are going to be of CMOS nature, and uh, CMOS technology actually has two different types of transistor called NMOS and PMOS. So out of those, uh, NMOS is uh, more commonly encountered in analog applications. So first we will uh, see what are NMOS transistors. And uh, since the focus of this course is circuit, so we will be uh, concentrating less on this transistor, that means this device since we will be using this for our circuit purpose, so we want some feel or some idea of uh, how this transistor uh, is uh, physically constructed. That means uh, physical uh, construction of this transistor and uh, what is the uh, qualitative functionality and few equations. And those equations we will treat as axioms that means uh, we will not go into how they are derived. We will simply uh, point it out and then we will use them uh, for uh, purpose of developing what is called model of this transistor because model is required when we analyze any circuit. And model of the transistor is going to be another circuit or network of uh, components, registers and uh, capacitors and dependent sources such that they behave exactly same as the actual device or the transistor. So today we will uh, uh, visit this NMOS transistor, see its uh, principle of functionality and the equations which govern its uh, behavior. So. Unlike BJT, these uh, transistors, MOS transistors, they uh, use only one type of uh, charge carrier, either electron or hole. However, in BJT, both are involved simultaneously. So, to understand the functionality of uh, N MOS transistor and their structure, we will uh, uh, point out two familiar uh, phenomena. First is, suppose we have a bulk material like this and we want current to flow through this by applying uh, voltage across it. Then the current will flow only if there are charge carriers say for example electrons inside it, free electrons which will be able to move uh, under the influence of electric field that is going to get created because of the external voltage applied here. So if there are uh, more free electrons, uh, conductivity will be high and there will be more current. So this current that flows through this will be uh, dependent upon uh, how much of free charges or electrons are inside this bulk material. So if the bulk material inherently has a lot of free electrons like in conductor then there is no problem there will be plenty of current when you apply a voltage. However if material is such that there are very less number of electrons free electrons, then the current is going to be very small. In those scenarios, we would like to do something so that free electrons get created and then we can have current. So although the current is uh, flowing because of this voltage applied, there will be another control, in fact there will be another voltage which can be used to create sufficient number of free electrons in material like semiconductor which inherently does not have enough electrons. 
so that voltage will act as control over the charge density inside it and in return it will also decide what will be the current in addition to this voltage so there is another voltage uh, that will be acting like a control voltage and using that we can also decide the current so if we have any resistor here for example then the resistor will experience a voltage which will be decided not only by this voltage but the second voltage that is applied so that way we will be able to uh, control the flow of current through this device and uh, it can be made to use as a switch uh, by uh, creating very large charge density or uh, zero charge density additionally uh, that can be used for uh, amplified version of voltage develop across this if we change the control voltage so we are now going to see in more detail that uh, what should be the physical structure uh, what additional uh, setup we will have to do so that we can control the charge density here so that is uh, done with the help of capacity defect so we take the help of capacity defect to uh, control the charge density in a semiconductor bulk material so for that uh, setup will be something like this that this is the material this one which i am showing in rectangular fashion and uh, this is uh, not conductor but uh, uh, semiconductor material say silicon and uh, we want sufficient charge density uh, over at least a small portion so that uh, current can easily flow through that region so what we do we take a metal plate and we apply a voltage here and here we can have dielectric whose uh, typical purpose is to support physically separate them otherwise fundamentally that is not needed so here we can have a voltage so now what this voltage will do this will create a, a positive charges on this conductor plate and that will uh, result in electric field from higher potential plate to this semiconductor bulk material so now because of this electric field what will happen is whatever small number of free electrons are available in this uh, uh, bulk material they will be pulled towards the upper surface of this semiconductor so what will happen here is that there will be concentration of negative charges on the upper surface of this uh, material so what has happened here is the conductivity of this upper portion of uh, semiconductor has increased and this will increase depending upon the value of this voltage if it is very large there will be significantly large concentration so what now we can see is we have a control mechanism using which we can uh, change the conductivity of a small portion of the uh, semiconductor material so here now if i apply a voltage like this then of course there will be now large current that will flow through this loop and of course the current through the first loop is going to be uh, negligible because we have a dielectric separating the two polarities of uh, this you can say this is now uh, resembling like a capacitor so this is what happens in capacity uh, in a capacitor one of the plates get positively charged other gets negatively charged 
So here now you can see that uh, we have uh, now a conductive uh, what is called channel or uh, conductive portion that will be called as conductive channel through which current will flow and uh, current will of course be decided by this V2 and V1 both. So here uh, we see that if V1 is equal to 0 or maybe very small then no channel exists implying that this current I through the second loop is going to be 0. So under this condition uh, this device is going to act like a open switch or you can say switch is off. Now if we have V1 as very large very large in that case so uh, there is channel not only it exists but uh, conductivity will be very high so uh, sufficiently large current will flow and we say that in this case this device is acting like a open switch uh, sorry closed switch that means switch is on between say these two uh, nodes you can call this as s and the, this as d so between s and d later on i will explain why i am using this s and d terms so this definitely can act as a switch now not only it can act as a switch but it can also act as amplifier where in the second loop you will get a voltage larger than the voltage that you are applying here v1 so for that what you can do we want to create a additional voltage so we can put a register here and we can call it as a rl so now what will happen uh, there will be voltage pl that will be equal to i into rl so what we do now is, uh, suppose we apply a time varying voltage V1. So voltage is changing with time. That means this uh, uh, conductivity of the channel is changing with time. And that will imply that this current changes with time. So what you will see is now a voltage here that will be changing with time. So this VL is now going to be a time dependent voltage right so and of course this will be controlled by the P1 voltage which itself is varying with time so if you have a, a sufficiently large current and sufficiently large uh, register then uh, for suitable condition this VL can turn out to be greater than V1 and if this happens we say that uh, we have been successful in amplifying the control voltage V1 and we are getting a larger voltage VL right. so this is the uh, basic idea on which MOS device uh, they have been uh, constructed and uh, this is how the MOS devices are used either as switch this application or as amplifier so this is switch application as switch and this is as amplifier so what we find is that same device based on what is the range of voltages control voltages that you are taking can be used either as a switch if the voltage is very small and very large only the two possible values you allow or if you allow it to be time varying and between these two ranges then it can act as amplifier
and here uh, you can see that uh, this current which results in the voltage across load and this voltage we say that is uh, amplification or amplified version of voltage V1 uh, ideally should depend only on this uh, voltage V1 rather than V2 but here if you set up this simple uh, circuit then this current in general is going to be dependent upon both V2 and V1 which is not desirable what we want is I to be dependent upon only V1 so fortunately the MOS device that is constructed based on this idea uh, is able to uh, fulfill this requirement provided uh, these voltages they are of uh, suitable range strictly speaking uh, for MOS also the actual dependency will be something like this so here we see that uh, what we have basically created is a current source which is controlled by a voltage so for the second loop this device basically acts as uh, voltage controlled current source and for amplifier purpose uh, it behaves uh, very much like this which is what we want so now with this idea we will uh, uh, move to the actual uh, configuration of uh, NMOS device and then we will see that how this idea which, which has been elaborated sir, uh, sir can you please tell us uh, more about how so for uh, amplifier this voltage is getting uh, created by microphone which will be very small so what we want uh, ultimately a voltage larger than this so see how that can happen um, at least in principle so this is going to be a time varying voltage and this will dictate uh, uh, what will be the uh, density or the amount of charges in this region that means the conductivity and we know that if more charges are there for any given voltage there will be more current right so uh, if this voltage varies with time this charge density is going to vary with time and that will lead to variation in the uh, this current that flows through the second loop which contains the load for example uh, speaker through which we want uh, this current to flow so that uh, voice ultimately again gets converted into voice so what we find is that the voltage that will uh, be developed across RL is going to be given by this current into RL so now if we want amplification that means we want more of this voltage across the load compared with the control voltage V1 that is being applied to the device so we will have to construct a device in such a way that there is a sufficiently large charge density for a typical voltage that you encounter in the real life so that current is sufficiently large and of course the load is also sufficiently large in that case the product of I into RL is going to be uh, sufficiently large and greater than V1 but, but sir how can, can we say this thing that uh, the charge density of that uh, silicon of, of that uh, wafer will be more uh, as compared to uh, like uh, that like the like the charge density will vary in such a way that uh, the charge density will increase such that the v2 will become more than the controlled input v1 uh, so you are not able to appreciate that why this charge density should depend upon v1 Yes, sir. It it will it will depend on okay. V one actually. But sir, how can we say this thing directly that uh, the charge density will increase directly because the charge density should vary with V one. Charge density will vary with V one. You accept that? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. It, it will vary with V one. Okay. Then what is problem? Uh, sir, uh, but you are saying that the the charge density is actually varying with V one, and V two is varying with charge density. Uh, no, no, no. V2 is responsible for the flow of current. In fact, 
for any given charge density v2 will also decide what is the current because if i keep on increasing the v2 there will be a more current right there will be so but that is undesired so this actually is going to happen but dependency of this current on v2 is undesirable and this is what we want then only we can have a voltage across rl which will be purely dependent upon v1 and fortunately okay, fortunately uh, this idea can be implemented and has been implemented in nmos in such a way that we achieve this kind of behavior uh, for very good practical purpose okay sir Go right ahead. thank you sir okay so now we will see the uh, functionality uh, structure of uh, nmos and see that how the just now discussed uh, device idea uh, gets implemented so uh, we are going to talk about what is called nmos so this nmos uh, also has this capacitive uh, nature so we start with uh, bulk material we will be calling this as bulk material or substrate because this will be thicker and have more volume compared with the upper conductive plate so here we start for example with uh, p substrate means p type semiconductor and in this semiconductor we create two wells of n type or rather n plus that means this region is semiconductor say for example silicon doped with boron but these two n plus regions they are doped with phosphorus and the density of phosphorus is much more compared with the density of boron in this region substrate region or this is also called bulk p bulk so now this is our uh, semiconductor material and then we have our usual conductor and then there will be a dielectric region separating these two uh, conductors and the substrate so here this is going to be our d node or terminal this is going to be s terminal and this terminal uh, where we applied voltage v1 will be called as g terminal so this v1 is being applied to terminal g and uh, between the bulk so and here if you see the three dimensional view then structure will look something like this so this is cross section and this is the horizontal direction Uh, into the paper where we have uh, this as metal and this dielectric is si o2 oxide and this is of course semiconductor so here you can see that the uh, MOS stands for this metal then oxide and semiconductor we will explain that why it has n here so now we have a capacitor with metal and uh, semiconductor separated by a dielectric material uh, silicon oxide and the symbol that we use for this device is like this so this will be called as d node this is s to distinguish between d and s we have an arrow here and this will will be called as g and here you can see a gap that conveys a capacitive uh, nature of this device so symbol for this one is this one and so here first thing we will have to do is that create a, a conductive channel here that means electrons in this region between drain 
and source. So what we did in the previous device, we applied a voltage between this gate and the substrate, a bulk material of sufficiently large value and that resulted in the uh, channel here between drain and source. So now what we will do, we will talk about only the cross section of this device and uh, apply the voltage here and see that how this channel gets created or how the electric field gets created and then the channel. So before that, uh, this region is called channel with length L and this will be called as the width of the channel. These two parameters, they will appear in uh, equation that we will write for the current. So when we draw only the cross section of this device, then we show it like this. So what we do, we apply a positive voltage Vg between gate, G stands for gate and the substrate. So once you apply this voltage and we keep say drain, this D stands for drain, this stands for source and this is stands for gate. So when we have this kind of scenario, positive voltage at the gate, then you can clearly see that there will be electric field originating from this positively uh, charged plate, upper plate towards the all the ground location. So there will be electric fields like this. In this way. So here we find that uh, electric fields start from the gate plate and go towards the source and drain and plus region which has plenty of electrons. This P substrate this will not have a, a good amount of uh, electrons it will have holes as majority. So what will happen is that uh, these electric fields they will pull the electrons from this N plus region into this channel region. So what will result is this kind of charge distribution. Here. Okay. So as you increase the gate voltage Vg more and more charges will exist inside this and then we say that the uh, channel uh, exists with larger and larger current density. So I have explained this uh, phenomena in a very simple way uh, because we are not interested in going into in-depth uh, analysis of device. But this from here to here, that means when you apply VG and appearance of this is not a straight forward. There are few other phenomena that occurs. That means uh, this density will get created only if if this Vg is greater than certain threshold voltage Vth. And if Vg is less than this threshold voltage, which will be typically between 0.3 to 0.5 volts, then there will be no free electrons in this region which is called channel. So uh, if Vg is greater than Vth we will have channel and uh, now you can see that if you apply a voltage between a uh, drain and uh, source then there will be uh, current from drain towards the source. 
So before we move on to see that what happens uh, when we apply certain voltage between drain and source, that means uh, the second voltage, this V2. What we have currently done is we have applied this Vg to create the channel. So before we uh, go to that uh, scenario, let us uh, uh, focus on this. So what we find here is that when Vg is increased, the channel conductivity this goes up. That means there will be more free charges and this implies that uh, channel resistance let us say R on that means when channel has been created by ensuring this condition then uh, uh, what is the resistance net resistance between drain and source uh, or that means that that of channel so this will go down so one immediate additional possible application of this device that emerges is that it can be used as a variable register between drain and source node R on which will be controlled by the gate voltage. So this is a uh, added advantage of this and there are certain applications where uh, this device MOS will be used as uh, variable register. So you increase this thing and this will go down. And of course when VG is less than threshold this R on is going to be infinite. So when drain and source they are at zero voltage then there will be uniform charge distribution along the channel because there is only one electric field and it is symmetrical about the vertical line so similar kind of charge density will exist on the both sides but our ultimate goal is to create a current between drain node and source node for that we will have to apply additional voltage which is here V2 so now when we apply V2 V2 creates its own electric field inside the device in addition to what was created by Vg. So the net electric field that will exist inside device is going to be uh, the resultant of electric field due to Vg plus electric field due to the drain voltage. So that will be definitely not symmetrical like this and that will of course uh, change the charge distribution inside this uh, channel region also. So let us see that what will uh, happen when we apply a drain voltage also. Since these two voltages are independent, so we can uh, plot their electric field independently and then add the two electric fields. So this is drain voltage and gate voltage say for example we have made zero and source of course has to be at lower potential compared with drain because we want current from drain to source. So now you can see that uh, a voltage exists VDS which is same as the previous case the concept conceptual device that we discussed in the beginning. So here you can see that now there will be electric field starting from this drain node and going towards uh, source and then this bulk so there will be electric field like this yeah. so in real life this device will be used when both gate voltage and the drain voltage are present. That means the net field that will exist is going to be some of these two fields. And here you can see that uh, in the region close to the drain the two fields they are of almost opposite nature. So 
the net field in the drain region is going to be now smaller compared with the source region where two fields are almost in the same direction. So the resultant field near the source going to be strong but you know, towards the drain region it is going to be weak. So this will have consequence on the charge density that exists between drain and source. So what will happen now is you will have this kind of charge distribution. That means more towards the source region and less towards the, sorry, uh, yes, source region and less towards the drain region. Here. But the channel anyway exists, so there will be flow of definitely current from drain to source. So this is the what happens with respect to the channel that means uh, creation of a conductive region and the density of charge. Now we would like to see that how the current this current from drain to source varies. So this is for positive drain voltage VD and this is also for positive gate voltage and source is grounding. So in terms of symbols we have this scenario now source is grounded there is a voltage here Vd and there is another voltage here Vg. And the quantity of interest is this current that flows from drain to source ID. So now we would like to uh, see the what is called IV characteristics that means how this drain current varies with gate voltage and with the drain voltage. So there will be two plots separate plot ID versus VG for fixed D and ID versus VD or fixed G. So our understanding will uh, give some idea that uh, how these two curves should look like. Uh, so now we can explain why we have word N here. So because uh, the charge carrier are electrons in the channel, so that is why we have N here. If these were uh, holes, then that would have uh, led to uh, symbol P here. So we'll talk about that device also later on. So we have uh, N channel, metal oxide semiconductor, field effect transistor. So first characteristic is going to be ID versus VG and here a uh, source should always be at a lower potential compared with the drain so that you can have this uh, current from drain to source. So and uh, uh, source that's why need not always be at zero voltage. So you can uh, connect source at certain voltage and drain will be at a higher voltage compared with the source. Similarly, gate should also be at a higher voltage compared with the source. So source simply acts as a reference relative to which all these two voltages they have to be higher. And uh, to keep things simple, we try to keep source and this node that is called bulk at the same potential. So in uh, all the future discussion, we will not talk about what is the potential of this uh, bulk material <coughs> and there are consequences if the bulk material is kept at a different potential compared with the source. So we will not talk about that. We will take the simpler scenario when both are at the same voltage and uh, 
and that is why instead of maybe talking about only VG we will be sometime also talking about VGS or only uh, VD instead instead of VD we will be talking about VDS so one of the important IV characteristics is drain current versus gate voltage or gate to source voltage and second is going to be with the respect to drain so here we have ID on Y axis VG or VGS on the X axis so we have seen that when this gate voltage is greater than a threshold then only channel gets created and if channel does not exist then whatever may be the drain to source voltage there will be no drain current so this voltage will be able to create this drain current only if this is above a threshold so if the gate voltage is below threshold all the currents are going to be zero all the time now suppose gate voltage starts becoming greater than this threshold voltage then of course uh, there will be current that will start flowing so for example you can keep drain voltage fixed at VD so this is how the drain current will vary uh, for fixed VD but with varying gate voltage now if I increase uh, drain voltage to say VD2 and again start from 0 for the gate voltage then what will happen it will be 0 up till this point but after this it will again increase but now at a, a larger value so we see that uh, drain current is dictated not only by the gate but by drain voltage also both have the uh, consequences for the drain current so similarly you will have for still larger voltage so this is how the ID versus IG will look like right. now the second characteristic is ID versus drain voltage for fixed gate voltage so second is ID versus VD or VDS so here we have VD on the x-axis or VDS and ID on the y-axis so here also uh, if gate voltage is less than the threshold there will be no channel and there will be no current so if VG say 0 and VG 0 is less than VTH then whatever may be the drain voltage current is always going to be 0 it will never have non-zero value but if I take VG 1 which is greater than VTH then so this implies channel exists and since channel exists so even if you apply a very small drain voltage there will be drain current so if you have a very small drain voltage then the, the conductivity is going to be uh, very less that means resistance is going to be very large and that is why you will have a current something like this we know that ID is going to be VD by R on so if VG is less this R on is going to be very high and that is why the slope is going to be very less 1 by R on is the slope of this plot So as we increase uh, gate voltage, channel charge density increases, conductivity increases, 
that means so uh, for VG increasing implies and it typically goes on this implies R on comes down that means the slope of this curve is going to increase so this is for example VG1 if you take a larger gate voltage you will have this kind of plot if you take still larger you will get VG3 and so on and so forth here you might have noted that I have uh, plotted this graph in dotted fashion so this is to convey that this behavior unfortunately does not continue forever this is valid only for very small drain voltage so this is valid for small VD or VDS so in this region uh, when the drain voltage is small we see that the drain current depends not only upon the drain voltage but it also depends upon the <coughs> uh, gate voltage so in this region the equation for the drain current can be derived and uh, that equation turns out to be as follows Here. So here you can see that ID is function of gate voltage as well as drain voltage. And uh, in this expression, uh, this is these three are uh, familiar. So we have uh, four different symbols here. Mu n is uh, mobility of electron. Uh, w I have already shown the width of the device. L is the channel length here. So this is channel length, this is the width of the device and COX is the capacitance of this device per unit area because you, here you can see that you have one plate, upper plate here as conductor and the entire bulk is acting like the bottom plate. So uh, there is a certain amount of capacitance for any given uh, device size. So that uh, capacitance is converted for per unit area of this upper gate plate. So that is uh, called COX. So here uh, you can see that uh, this drain current uh, depends upon drain voltage as the uh, second uh, of our second order that means in a parabolic fashion. So what we have shown here in the beginning is scenario when the drain voltage is very small. So here you can see that for this second order term being very small compared with this that means when 2 VGS minus threshold is significantly greater than VDS if this is the scenario which happens in the vicinity of the origin then this ID gets approximated to 1 by 2 mu n COX W by L 2 VGS minus VTH into VDS yeah. so now you can see that we have equation which is similar to this one ID is equal to IDS uh, divided by a constant. So this equation can be written in terms of say equation 1. So 2 can be written in terms of equation 1 and what we will have is
id is equal to vds divided by one by mu n c o x w by l uh, sorry and then there will be v g s minus v t h also here so this entire factor can be taken in the denominator of this and now we have equation 3 so if you compare equation 3 with equation 1 this one then you can find out that uh, r on is equal to 1 by mu n c o x w by l v g s minus v t h so here this MOS between drain and source will be acting like a register with value R on provided uh, this condition is satisfied 2 VGS minus TH is much much greater than uh, DS so this is uh, one of the applications but this is not the main application for which this device was constructed. Right, so this is the story when this one is small. So even with this small, it has two regions. One is that when VDS is very, very small and uh, second region when DS is small, but not so small that you can neglect this one. So this region where VDS is small, on the whole is called triode region so this triode region uh, has uh, that current equation and uh, in the deep triode triode region this is what happens so this happens in the deep triad region which means that uh, 2 vgs minus the much much greater than ds so when you come out of this region that means when ds is small but not very small then this cannot be neglected and then you can see that uh, drain current will have a parabolic dependency so in the triode region the IV characteristic is going to look like this. So it will be a straight line in the beginning and then it will have a parabolic behavior. So this is VDS, this is 0 and this is ID. So and these are the four various gate to source voltages. So this is for VGS1, VGS2, VGS3 and this is going to be parabolic given by the equation shown earlier and in the uh, region close to the origin you can see that they are going to be a straight line uh, representing R arm. So now here you can see that uh, if this is the drain current then one can ask what is the maximum drain current possible. That means what will be the peak of these parabola. That means what will be these values. maximum ID and that is called saturation current. Saturation current means uh, that is the maximum drain current that you can get from the actual device also. So this you can find out by doing del ID by del VDS is equal to 0 and if you do this 
what you will get is id max is equal to 1 by 2 mu n c o x w by l b g s minus b t h whole square so all these peaks of the parabola they are going to be given by this equation 4 and this is the uh, actually the maximum saturation current that you will get from the device so now we can extend uh, these plots for the larger value of uh, VDS as well so the ID versus VDS for the complete range of VDS is going to look like this for increasing value of VGS. So this is VGS1, VGS2, VGS3 and of course these are greater than the threshold and these are the uh, maximum values. So this is going to be ID max 1, this is going to be ID max 2 and this is going to be ID max 3. So this is what happens in the real life almost. Uh, we will talk about uh, some modification in this region but you can see that the drain current after certain values they become independent of the uh, drain to source voltage and these values they are VGS1 minus VTH. For example, this one. This is going to be VGS minus VTH. VGS2 minus VTH. This is VGS3 minus VTH. So on and so forth. So the another important and what was desired application from this device is that if you have a, uh, this condition that means drain to source voltage is greater than this voltage V G V D and V S so if this drain voltage is sufficiently large then this condition will get satisfied that means uh, uh, this region is V D S greater than V G S minus V T S so implying that V D is greater than V G minus V T H so for sufficiently large drain voltage you will be in this region and then this device between drain and source will act like a current source whose value will be given by ID max. So this is the second application of uh, this device and the main use of this device is actually based on this application rather than the register application that happens in the deep triode region that we talked about. So here you can see that this device characteristic gets divided into two regions triode and saturation region and the deep triode region has digestive application triode region is usually uh, not of much use saturation region as the a current source application which we will see is used for uh, amplification and all these things uh, you can find in Rajavi chapter 6